It's day two of the Jesse Tree. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! We hear a ho 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 from Santa. Joshua is all dressed up as Santa Claus. Anyways, today in the Jesse Tree devotional that we're doing here, we're looking at, you can see our tree up here, and we're going to put another ornament on it a little bit, but we're looking at the story of Adam and Eve. Yesterday was in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, but Today, it's the story of our first parents, Adam and Eve. So, and you can see the, the first picture there. So it says, and if you wanted to read in your own Bible, if you have a, a King James or an NIV or uh, a living translation, what, whatever it is you want to look at, you can look at chapter 2. Make sure you see verse 17 and then all the way through chapter 3. That's what we're looking at today in this kid's Bible. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam. We talked about Adam's name. What does Adam's name mean? Dirt. 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 Right. And he's not a dirt bag. But some people want to say he is because of this story. Okay. He's, but he's made of dirt. Carbon-based life. Okay. So God had planted a beautiful garden for Adam in a place called Eden. Or Eden. Have you ever heard of Eden before? And Eden translates to delight. So this garden of delight is where the first human is placed. Okay, And a river flowed through the garden. There's four rivers, actually. Okay, Then it says, Adam loved his new home. His job was to name all the animals and care for the garden Adam loved all the animals, but he could not find a friend that was just right for him. So God created a woman. And of course, the joke is, when Adam saw the woman, the way she's named was, Whoa! Man, look at that! Right? Wow! Wait. Is that embarrassing to you, Gracie? Anyways, we know that's, that's a joke. Uh, in Hebrew, his... He was man, or ish, and the woman would be isha. So maybe the joke doesn't hold up, but that's, that's the, the pastor joke. <laughs> so, hey, would you guys like to be able to name all the animals? Uh-huh. Yeah? Yeah? What would, what would you name a dog? Would you call it a dog, or would you have a different name for it? Dog. Dog. Puppy. you just call it dog or puppy. You, would, you wouldn't call it something different. You wouldn't call it a toucan, no, no, okay. Make sure you speak up so everybody can hear you, okay? Good, all right, let's come on. Adam named his Isha, his whoa man, Eve. She was just right for Adam. And Adam and Eve loved each other. Together, they took care of God's garden. Adam had a job to cultivate or take care of the garden right from the beginning. What are you doing over there, huh? <laughs> You're so silly. Yeah, they had, they had a job. And why is the first person named Eve? And the Bible says because she was the mother of all the living. And of course, the day begins in the Bible. There was evening, and then there was morning the first day. It goes on like that. So if the day begins with the evening, it makes sense that Eve is named after the beginning. The beginning of each day. So we move on to the, the action. The sneaky snake is what this one calls it. Many trees grew in the Garden of Eden, and God had told Adam and Eve, you may eat the fruit from any tree except for one. Never eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what do you think the fruit was? Do you think it was an apple? Do you? No. Yes. Yes? No. No? Or do you think it was a pomegranate? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. You do. Well, you know, in this book, they have pictures of a pomegranate. But I think most people, they think of it being an apple. So what is it? And the answer is it's fruit. That's all the Bible says. It's a fruit. We don't know. We don't know if we have that fruit, if it was a special fruit. But really, if you want to do a good reading of this, you've got to be really careful 
There were trees all over the garden, but in the midst or the middle of the garden, there were two. One was the tree of life. And if you eat from the tree of life, you would have life forever and ever, like for all eternity, eternal life. Does that make sense? But if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when you only knew what was good because God is good, but when you eat from that tree, you would then have knowledge of what it is to do what God said not to do, evil. So you would have the knowledge of both the good and the evil, and that's the tree God said, no, don't eat that. But there are two trees. Most children's books leave them out. I have seen a children's book where it has both, but most of them leave it out. So many trees grew in the garden of Eden. And God told Adam and Eve, you may eat the fruit from any tree except for one. Never eat the fruit from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. Now there was a sneaky snake in the garden. And one day the snake saw Eve near the special tree and it hissed. Do we have a snake? Well, kind of like a snake. This one has legs. But then... One of the curses that happens to the snake is that it would go on its belly. Maybe this snake had, or serpent, had legs. Maybe. Maybe it had wings. Maybe it was a dragon. I don't know. But it hissed. Did God really tell you not to eat the fruit from this tree? Right? Go ahead and put that close to your mother's face. She really let no. No. No, but Gracie seems to really like you. That's not... All right, because we all know that some people like snakes, but a lot of people have trouble with snakes. They have enmity. The snake wanted Eve to disobey God and said, you should try some of this tasty fruit. If you eat it, you will be like God. Don't stop there. You will be able to tell the difference between good and evil. So eating the fruit didn't make you become God. It gave you this similar ability to know good and evil. So you would be like God. <clears throat> the fruit looked tasty. What do you think? Does it look tasty? Yeah. You can smile. Yeah. Yes? You want? Oh, you're going to eat it, huh? All right. The fruit looked tasty. And Eve remembered what God had said. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. I'm sorry. The snake wanted Eve to disobey God and said, you should try some of this tasty fruit. If you eat it, you will be like God. You'll be able to tell the difference between good and evil. And the fruit looked tasty. And Eve remembered what God had said. But she ate the fruit anyways. And she gave some to Adam too. Which is why so many people like to pick on ladies for this. But if you read your Bible very closely there in Genesis 3, you'll see the woman and the man were together. He was right there as the sneaky snake talked to her. And when she bit, he was right there and he was right there to get it. It's not like he was around the other side of the tree and didn't realize what was happening. He was right there. What's worse is that if you look at Genesis 2, 17, you'll see that God told Adam not to do this. Eve is created after that. So the reason she would know these things is because Adam told her. And yet Adam doesn't stop. Doesn't stop her from doing this. And then he eats too. So it's definitely something they did together. Eve gave some to Adam and he took a bite too. As the sun was going down, Adam and Eve heard God walking through the garden. And he was looking for them. And Adam and Eve hid among the, hid among the trees because they were afraid. Can you hide from God? No. Nope, nope. No? Well, then why did they try to hide? Physically impossible. Physically impossible? Well, God was walking. Does that mean that God had legs? Mm-hmm. Does Jesus have legs? Yes. Yes, it's very possible that he took on human form or something like it and was walking there. So could you hide from him? No. Yeah. Does God know everything already? So why is it when we do something wrong that we try to hide from God, but yet he already knows everything? It's kind of a silly thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. What have you done, God asked. Did you eat from the fruit of the forbidden tree? 
Adam said yes. But Eve, she gave it to me. <laughs> and Eve said, yes, but the snake tricked me. So, and this is where we get the whole idea of passing the buck, right? Nobody wants to take responsibility. And God told the snake, because of what you did, you will always crawl on your belly. So rip off the legs, would you? Oh, you, you Well, that's where it is. You will always crawl on your belly. Then he told Adam and Eve, because you disobeyed me, you can no longer live in the garden. And a lot of people miss this. But it wasn't like God got mad and so he just kicked him out of the garden. Do you know why? Do you remember why they had to leave the garden? You guys speak out really loud. It's because they, they disobeyed, disobeyed God. Well, yes, but is that why they had to leave the garden? Yeah. In a way. Why did they have to leave the garden? Do you remember? No? They tried to hide from God? No. Do you remember? Did you want to say it loudly? Sure. It's because if they ate from the tree of life, then they would live forever disobeying God and displeasing Him. If you read the last paragraph of Genesis 3, it makes it clear that God was protecting Adam and Eve from what Melinda just said. The reason why they had to go wasn't because he was simply angry. It's that they were in their sin. And if they ate from the tree of life, which is not the tree of knowledge of good and evil that they'd eaten from, if they eat from the tree of life now, then they would live forever in their sin, meaning separated from God. And God loves us too much. He kicked them out of the garden. He drove them out of the garden to protect them from getting back to the tree of life until... Jesus would make it possible. And of course, the Jesse tree is looking at the, the family tree of Jesus leading up to Jesus. But Jesus is the one who will die on the cross for our sins. He's the one that makes uh, reconciliation possible. He's the one that dies. Because when you eat forbidden fruit and you walk away from the one that gives life, when you walk away from life, you're walking towards death. And Jesus goes and pays that price for you and me. He goes and dies on the cross so that we can live. And what we see in the end of Revelation, if I jump all the way to the end of the book, we see that we are again allowed to eat from the tree of life. But Adam and Eve, at this moment, need to be protected from themselves. They need to be protected from going and getting the tree of life. And there's nothing in your Bible that says that they couldn't eat from the tree of life. It says the one tree in the garden that they needed to stay away from was the one with that forbidden fruit. Oh, you like forbidden fruit, huh? No, it's bad for you. It'll kill you. Stay away from it, son. Adam and Eve left the garden. God placed angels in a flaming sword to guard the entrance. Do we have a sword here? Oh, he's going to run and get a sword. This is, this is you got to be careful. It's just, it's just not on fire, right? And it's nerf. So the God placed angels angels and a flaming sword to guard the entrance, and Adam and Eve would not be allowed in the garden again. Not till Jesus came and did his part for all of us to return to God. Now we're going to put the ornament on. Do you have an ornament? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold it up. So it's an apple with a bite taken out of it. Oh, why do you think there's a bite taken out of it, Joshua? Because they ate it. Oh, because it, that's right. So we've got the earth for in the beginning. God created them there. Go ahead and stick it on there. And we have an apple. This is day two, the story of Adam and Eve. The, as we move closer in the tree of Jesus, really, the Jesse tree. Remember, Jesse is the father of David, and Jesus is born in that line. And uh, so we just want to say Merry Christmas to you. Everybody say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas!